I am near the town of Rolas in Colorado, just off I-70, and about 8,442 feet underground, the Atomic Energy Commission detonated a 40 kiloton nuclear bomb in 1969 sending plumes of smoke into the air and setting off small rock slides in the bluffs surrounding the area. The earth shook like jelly, there was a muffled sound, and rocks and dirt broke loose from surrounding mesas. In Grand Valley, a few bricks fell from a few buildings. Why was this done? Well, this was part of the Operation Plowshare, where the United States was researching peaceful uses of nuclear weapons. The land is rich with natural gas, and at the time they're trying to figure out how to get the gas out in a cheap manner. This project was largely funded by a Texas oil company, who owned part of the land that the blast happened on. They put this bomb in the ground. That was twice as powerful as the one dropped on Hiroshima. The purpose of this blast was to release a large amount of natural gas easily. It succeeded in doing so, but the natural gas was contaminated with radiation and therefore could not be used for household uses like cooking and heating. Here's how they hoped it would work. This is how the device is expected to stimulate gas production in the Rulison field. The energy released by the nuclear explosion will melt and vaporize nearby rock and will fracture the rock beyond to a diameter of about 740 feet. A spherical cavity of about 160 feet in diameter will be created in about one-tenth of a second or in about the time the shock wave rebounds from the surface. As the cavity cools, the vaporized and melted rock will collect in a puddle at the bottom and most of the radioactivity will be entrapped here as it solidifies. Sometime after the explosion, the roof of the cavity will collapse progressively upward, forming a chimney of broken rock to a height of about 370 feet above the point of detonation. Government experts say the fractures beyond the cavity area are expected to provide flow channels for some of the gas trapped in the surrounding rock. The chimney will act as a chamber where the gas will collect to be drawn off through a well drilled back into the chimney. After the blast, the state of Colorado set up a buffer zone around the blast due to radiation contamination. The U.S. government started cleanup efforts in the 1970s and finished in 1988. In 2005, a test had declared that radioactivity was safe at the surface and in groundwater. The area around the site is full of fracking sites. They're not allowed near the site. Some, now, are within a mile radius of the blast. And the U.S. government has not detected any radiation in these wells when they were surveyed in 2018. Still, no one is allowed to drill within a half a mile radius of the blast. Now, this may have been the first nuclear blast in Colorado, but it was not the last. This is Project Rio Blanco in Rio Blanco County. A bomb was detonated here 6,700 feet below the surface in 1973 for the same reason. As you can see, there is nothing in this area at all, just some fracking wells. They also wanted to see if they could use nuclear bombs to blast out harbors, canals, and mountain passes. It is easy to see now why this didn't catch on. Now we have fracking to extract natural gas from the earth, which is just as productive as a nuclear bomb without the harmful side effects of radiation poisoning. If you're a fan of Colorado and the surrounding area, be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel. I upload new videos every Saturday. You can support this channel by liking or sharing the videos that I make. You can also purchase Colorado merchandise and prints, link in the description below.